Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. Today, we're going to be talking about skunks and deer, and we'd like to thank Mr. Fisher for giving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes. One of the earliest writings about skunks was from Charles Darwin when he was on the Beagle in Argentina. Hmm. So this was in the 1800s. And he said that the skunk looks like a polecat that roams around not fearing dog or men. Hmm. And then if a dog attacks it, its courage is instantly checked by a few drops of the skunk's oil, which is <laughs> extremely unpleasant. It brings on sickness and a runny nose. And whoever is polluted by it is useless. <laughs> And then the most popular skunk, Mm -hmm. Pepe Le Pew. (laughs) So most skunks are about the size of a cat, usually black with a white stripe right down their back, primarily found in the U.S. I didn't know that. And their defense mechanism is a pair of anal glands that shoot a spray 10 to 15 feet. And they say they're very accurate (laughs) with the spray. 10 feet? Amazing, huh? Wow. It's sulfur-based, and it contains these Theols. So this is the same chemical that's found in garlic, onion, rotting flesh, and feces. Hmm, nice. So, if, so if you get a direct hit from a skunk, it can cause vomiting, <laughs> temporary You're worthless, as Darwin would say. <laughs> <laughs> temporary blindness and pain, really? and that smell can last for days. Uh, and also, f- scientists found that it was flammable. <laughs> Who's the scientist who figured that out? And and I guess you know this. It's so devastating to other animals that they remember that white stripe and they stay clear of them. <laughs> So skunks can be a pest around your house. Since they're omnivores, they'll dig in your yard or garden searching for grubs, worms, bugs. They'll eat anything out of your garbage cans. Uh, go, they'll go after bird seed, pet food. Hmm. And then they can dig under your deck, shed, your house, uh, if you have wood piles. And then one of the problems is if you have you know, dogs or cats, you're worried about them being sprayed. Right. And then they also carry a variety of disease. In fact, they're the primary carrier of rabies in the Hmm. Midwest in the U.S. Really? To make your home less attractive to skunks, you'd want to remove access to any shelter, remove any food source. So bring in your pet bowls at night, bring in, you know, water if you have it for your pets every evening. They're nocturnal and very sensitive to light. So a motion sensor outside is is really an irritant Hmm. to skunks. And then if you don't have a motion sensor fixture... Right. Senglid. So the company's name is S-E-N-G-L-E-D. They mm-hmm. make this LED floodlight mm-hmm. that has a motion detector built into the light bulb itself. Super cool. Yeah, so it's pretty wild. So you can just screw this into a fixture, leave it on all the time, and then when a skunk comes in the backyard, it's going to turn on automatically. Hmm. For your garbage cans, you can get locking lids or just put a bungee cord over the top of them, grab it on the handles just to keep that lid in place, or put them into a shed. Mm -hmm. And then if you have skunks in the area but you don't have a problem yet under your porch, your shed, you can prevent it by setting up wire mesh all the way around or hardware cloth Mm -hmm. so that they can't get through that. And most pros recommend either using stakes or staples to hold it in place. And hardware cloth anywhere from a quarter inch to an inch. Mm -hmm. A lot of the pros were suggesting, because they're good diggers, to bend the bottom like an L shape. Mm -hmm. So you would dig down six inches, bend your hardware cloth at an angle so it kind of shapes an L, and then bury that. And that's going to discourage them from trying to dig underneath your porch. And then for your garden, they say that because they don't really jump or climb well, only a three-foot tall fence is necessary for skunks. But they do say that you should bury it 6 to 12 inches into the ground. So they're diggers, not jumpers? Right. (laughs) If you have skunks that have already made a den under your deck or your shed, you can create a barrier with a one-way door. Mm -hmm. So the key thing is to try to identify their their normal path. So you can take some flour, put it down all over the area, and see where they're coming and going, let's Mm -hmm. say under your patio. And now you're going to create an 8-inch wide opening right there. You can put hardware cloth on both sides of that. And then create a door about a 10 inch square of hardware cloth. You're going to attach it at the top with cable ties. Mm-hmm. And that way, if they're under the patio, let's say, when they push out, they can leave, but they can't easily push it back in to get in. Uh-huh. And, the, <laughs> and the one thing you got to be aware of is skunks breed in the spring and then they care for their babies till fall. Mm-hmm. So if you can see with a high powered flashlight, you know, then you want to make sure that there's not babies underneath there. If you can't tell, 
then this is something you may want to do until fall. I mean, so you're going to look underneath your deck with a high-powered flashlight? Aren't you going to get sprayed? (laughs) That's one of the dangers. For your lawn, to prevent skunks from digging holes, you'd want to use a grub control every year, and that's going to eliminate that food source. And uh, gardeners have found that skunks dislike the smell of citrus. Hmm. So there's a lot of gardeners that recommend taking orange and lemon peel and making a perimeter all around your garden. Interesting. Critter Ritter, they have their animal repellent, which uses hot peppers to repel <laughs> skunks. And so they don't like citrus or hot peppers? <laughs> right, right. And then Repels All Granules is from Bonide, and this uses clove oil, garlic oil, and putrefied egg solids to repel skunks Lovely. and then you can make your own skunk repellent they say chop up an onion jalapeno peppers or very spicy peppers mm-hmm. a tablespoon of cayenne pepper and then boil this for 15 to 20 minutes in two quarts of water mm-hmm. strain it and then put it into a spray bottle and then you apply this once a week or every time it rains since it rains then you apply this and they say that after a few days of them going into this area that they won't go back again <laughs> <laughs> There's some products that contain predator urine, and researchers found that they're not that effective. Hmm. And so they think that skunks are just so cocky with their spray <laughs> that they, they don't care who's around. Except the one thing that really attacks skunks are the great horned owls. Hmm. So they attack from above, and they found that they don't seem to be bothered by the smell. A couple highly rated deterrents. One is have a heart spray away. So mm-hmm. this is a motion sensor that you connect to your garden hose. And so it's a sprinkler. So this is going to work day or night, any type of pests that come within the range of this motion sensor. Mm-hmm. And then it starts the sprinkler. And so yeah. the sound and the water scares off Didn't uh, we talk pests. about this about raccoons? Yeah, yeah, it works with a lot of different animals. Predator Guard is a solar-powered LED deterrent light. So this stimulates the flight response. So it looks like a pair of red eyes flashing. Ooh, spooky. Yeah. And so they say mount it 12 inches off the ground for skunks. Hmm. But I guess this works for a lot of different animals. Wow. And then it's great for Halloween. <laughs> if your deterrents aren't working, Time you, to can, move. You, you, <laughs> you can use traps mm-hmm. to get rid of skunks. So Have a Heart has a wide range of... I don't think you've spelled yet today. Have a Heart. H-A-V-A-H-A-R-T. And I would get one of their large traps. They're going to have it marked what types of animals on, are on the outside of the box. Mm-hmm. And you can use meat, oily fish, or cat food hmm. as a bait. And then you want to check this every day. Wear very thick leather gloves. And then most pros recommend throwing a blanket over the top of the trap. And then a couple of the pros said that they found the best thing to do when you catch a, a skunk mm-hmm. is to sing to it softly, nonstop, until you take it 10 miles away from your house. You have to sing to the skunk? Sing to the skunk, because if, you're, if, you're, if you're quiet yeah. and then there's any loud noises or anything, no, it, it, tr- <laughs> it triggers a spray. So, so you're going to put this in your car, or you're going to get like yeah. a wagon. Right. <laughs> yeah, like a, like a kid's wagon. <laughs> yeah. And just, just and go, sing to go it. on a trek. Yeah. <laughs> You know, an interesting trap is tomahawk, and they make a spray-proof skunk trap. Mm -hmm. So this is like a long tube that seals the skunk in. Oh, I like this. (laughs) And then you just drive 10 miles away. And you don't have to sing? Right. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And then I would check my local codes. Uh, Some villages don't allow you to trap. Hmm. If you have a skunk that falls into a window well... Since they're not very good climbers, you can lay a rough board down at an angle so that they can climb up easy, or you can cover it with carpet or chicken wire so that they can get a better grip, because mm-hmm. <laughs> once they're in there, they have a heck of a time getting out. You should sing to it, of course. Yeah. And, and then another thing you can use is a five-gallon bucket. So what they recommend is getting a nice solid rope, drop in a five-gallon bucket so it lays on its side, and then on the inside of that, you've put some type of attractant. Mm-hmm. So they crawl in. The minute they crawl in, then you yank them up and out. And, and hopefully they'll get sprayed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's Good <that>. luck. <laughs> and then if you have a pet door, well, you shouldn't have a pet door. <laughs> you can put motion detector lights above it or use hot oh. pepper spray all around it and then make well, sure then that... is your pet going to come in and out of it? <laughs> make sure you're locking this up every evening. Oh, well, would you freak out if a skunk <laughs> just came wandering in? <laughs> Get out the citrus, man. <laughs> yeah. 
If you or your pet gets sprayed by skunk, most of the home remedies don't work. So like tomato juice or vinegar. Where and did that come from, the tomato juice thing? Yeah, weird, huh? Mm-hmm. So a chemist was working with these theols doing his research, and these theols are the key chemicals that create that terrible smell in the skunk's oil. So this is the formula. So take one quart of 3% hydrogen peroxide, get a new bottle that's been unopened, mm-hmm. a quarter cup of baking soda, and two teaspoons of liquid soap, and you mix this in a plastic bucket, mm-hmm. and this will completely eliminate skunk smell. And they found that this is the only home remedy that so will what are you act- supposed to do, like wash yourself with this? Yeah, just soak yourself. So if your pet, let's say your pet gets sprayed by a skunk, Mm -hmm. you're going to create this into a bucket and you're going to rub it into their fur and leave it for at least five minutes. Fifteen minutes is better. And you need to be careful around their eyes because it can sting it. So you'd want to use like a damp sponge around their eyes. Mm -hmm. But work it into their fur and it will actually, the hydrogen peroxide will actually bond with those, these theols Uh and neutralize them, Mm. which is pretty amazing. So, so and then you, what do you do? Rinse it? Yes, and then just or you rinse just it. keep it out forever. <laughs> rinse it with warm water. <laughs> and then you never want to put this into a bottle, like a spray bottle, because it'll build up pressure and burst. <laughs> so, but really, and a then you have sim- a bigger mess. Yeah, simple, <laughs> easy way to to neutralize the skunk smell. Have you tried it? No, luckily I haven't <laughs> had to. So hydrogen peroxide is pretty wild. It's just water with an extra oxygen atom. And so 3% hydrogen peroxide is safe for projects around the house. You can disinfect small cuts with it. It removes stains from your teeth. Really? You can clean tile, whiten grout, clean your toilet bowl. It removes soap scum. It removes dirt and contaminants from fruits and vegetables, so you can use it as a vegetable wash. Wow. It removes blood from fabrics, mm-hmm. but you got to be careful. It does bleach some things. <laughs> but if you try to get like a highly concentrated version of this, uh-huh. and if you heat it up to boiling, It explodes. Wow. How much time did you spend on this? (laughs) If you don't want to create your own formula, Unique, the company we've talked about, they have the bacteria and enzyme drain openers. Right. They have their Unique Natural Products Skunk Odor Eliminator. Mm. So this is using bacteria and enzymes to break down the odor-causing chemicals. Mm. So this is a concentrate, so you're going to mix it with water and you can put it onto your pet's fur. You want to leave it on for about 15 minutes, and the bacteria is actually going to break down nice. those molecules. And then you can also use this on upholstery and fabric. I believe at the beginning of this episode you mm. titled it Skunks and Deer. <laughs> we have yet to talk about deer. You know what's interesting about deer <laughs> is they only live two to four years in the wild. Really? But they'll live 15 to 20 years in a zoo. Hmm. Wild, huh? Yeah. So the biggest problem with deers is they love a good garden. <laughs> so you want to really keep them out of, out of your garden. And deer can actually jump 8 to 12 feet. Wow. So most pros are recommending fences at least 8 feet tall to control <laughs> deer around your yard and your garden, which is pretty wild. So some suggest a double fence. And deer don't want to jump anywhere they can't see a clear space to land, they hmm. found. And so deer netting, they've also found very effective around plants. Electric fences are very effective with deer. And then combine this with an attractant. So they found that if you put like little pieces of paper, strips of paper or strips of cloth, Mm -hmm. and then put an attractant on that so they come up and they actually touch the electric fence. Well, that's just mean. (laughs) They say if they do that once or twice, the deer (laughs) do not come back. Yeah, well, jerk. (laughs) You know, it's interesting in those electric deer repellents, Have a Heart has these repellent posts. Mm -hmm. So it's just a post, Uh and you put batteries in it, and then there's an attractant on the top, and when their nose touches it, it gives them a shock, but you don't have to create a whole fence. Oh, nice. So so it's kind (laughs) of nice. It doesn't hurt. (laughs) Yeah, I'm sure. You take an electric shock and see how that feels. Motion detectors with floodlights and sprinklers are found to be very effective for deer. And then some gardeners found that hanging soap or fabric softener strips around their garden. Why? And, well, scientists found that deer are a 100 times more sensitive than humans, their smell. And so the Connecticut Department of Forestry said that the sulfur smell from rotting eggs or any rotting protein repels deer. Yeah, I'm sure it repels a lot of stuff. <laughs> the University of Illinois recommends Have a Heart's Deer Away Big Game Repellent because it's a combination of hot pepper and the rotting egg smell. Ew. <laughs> 
Another highly rated deer repellent is Sweeney's Deer Repellent. Mm -hmm. So this was developed by Stuart Clark. We mm. spoke to him before about the, some of the tarot products. And so this is their all-season deer repellent. It has these little canisters on a stake. The key ingredient is dried blood. <laughs> Bobex, B-O-B-B-E-X, has a hot pepper, egg, and dried blood repellent. Lovely. And, and then you can just make your own. So you can get three raw <laughs> eggs, get some hot peppers and garlic. You put this into a blender. You add it to a gallon of water, and then you let it set out for a couple of days so it ripens. Ugh. And then it keeps everything away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just put that Family, everywhere, you don't, everywhere you don't want a deer. <laughs> And then what you can combine with the repellents is an ultrasonic deterrent. Birdex has one of the highest rated, and the most effective that researchers have found is something with a motion sensor. Right. And they also found that if you vary the placement, so once a week or so, if you change the location of this, hmm. that it's the most effective. Because if it's just a one of these ultrasonic devices that are always on, right. they just get used to it. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything else to add? Multiple deterrents are the most effective. So motion sensors with a light, motion sensors with the sprinklers, mm -hmm. and then add smell or taste like the hot pepper and rotting egg. If you combine <laughs> those, most pests are not going to want to come into your yard or around your garden. For skunks, you'd want to block access to decks or sheds, mm -hmm. and then also you'd want to block access to your garden. So eight foot high fence? Eight foot deer, three foot skunks. <laughs> Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to our podcast in iTunes, Stitcher, the Spotify mobile app, the Google Play music app, and iHeartRadio. Wow, exciting. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can check out our book, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week.